Chapter 57 The history of Antony's battle with Augustus and of the death of Antony and of Herod's going to Augustus. When Antony had marched out of Egypt into the country of the Romans, he had encountered Augustus. Most severe battles took place between them, in which victory sided with Augustus, and Antony fell in battle. And Augustus got possession of his camp, and all which was in it. After this done, he proceeded to Rhodes, that taking ship there he might pass into Egypt. All tidings were brought to Herod, and he was very much concerned at the death of Antony, and he feared Augustus most exceedingly. And he resolved to go to him and salute him and congratulate with him. Wherefore he sent his mother and sister with his brother to a stronghold which he had in Mount Sarah. He sent also his wife Miriam and her mother Alexandra to Alexandrium under the care of Josephus, a Tyrian, adjuring him to kill his wife and her mother so soon as his death should be reported to him. After this he went to Augustus with a very valuable present. Now Augustus had already determined to put Herod to death, because he had been a friend and supporter of Antony, and because he had formerly deliberated upon marching with Antony to attack him. When therefore Herod's arrival was notified to Augustus, he ordered him into his presence, in his royal habit which he had on, except the diadem, for this he had ordered to be laid aside from his head. Who, when he was in his presence, having laid aside his diadem as Augustus had commanded, said, O king! Perhaps on account of my love towards Anthony, you have been thus violently angry with me, that you have put off the diadem from my head, or was it from some other cause? Since you are wroth with me by reason of my adherence to Anthony, truly I say I adhere to him because he deserved well of me, and placed upon my head the diadem which you have taken off. And indeed he has requested my assistance against you, which I gave him, even as he also many times gave his assistance to me. But it was not my lot to be present at the battle which he fought with you, nor have I drawn my swords against you, nor fought, the cause of which was my being engaged in subduing the Arabians. But I never failed supplying him with aid of men and arms and provisions, as his friendship and his good deeds to me required. And in truth I am sorry that I left him, lest men should conceive that I deserted my friend when he was in need of my help. Certainly if I had been with him, I would have helped him with all my might, and would have encouraged him if he had been fearful, and would have strengthened him if he had been weakened, and would have lifted him up if he had fallen, until God should have ruled matters as he pleased. And this truly would have been less grievous to me, than that it should be imagined that I had failed a man who had implored mine aid, and thus it should come to pass that my friendship should be little esteemed. In my opinion, indeed, he fell through his own bad policy, by yielding to that enchantress Cleopatra, whom I had advised him to slay, and thus to remove her malice from him, but he did not assent. But now, if you have removed from my head the diadem, certainly you shall not remove from me my understanding and my courage, and whatever I am, I will be a friend to my friends and an enemy to my enemies. Augustus replied to him, Anthony, indeed, we have overcome by our troops, but you we will master by alluring you to us and will take care by our good offices towards you that your affection to us shall be doubled, because you are worthy of this. And as Anthony played false by the advice of Cleopatra, by the same reason he behaved ungratefully towards us, returning for our kindness evils and for our favors rebellion. But we are glad of the war which you have waged with the Arabians who are our enemies, for whoever is your enemy is also ours, and whoever pays you obedience pays it to us likewise. Then Augustus ordered the golden diadem to be placed on Herod's head, and as many provinces to be added to him as he already had. And Herod accompanied Augustus into Egypt, and all the things which Antony had designed for Cleopatra were surrendered to him. And Augustus departed to Rome, but Herod returned into the holy city. Chapter 58 The History of the Murder Which Herod Committed on His Wife Miriam now Josephus, the husband of Herod's sister, had revealed to Miriam that Herod had ordered him to put her and her mother to death, as soon as he himself should perish in his going up to Augustus. And she already had a dislike of Herod since the time when he killed her father and brother. And to this no little addition of hatred was made, 
when she was informed of the orders which he had given against her. Wherefore, when Herod arrived out of Egypt, he found her totally overcome by hatred towards him, and which, being greatly troubled, he tried to reconcile her to him by all possible methods. But his sister came on a certain day, after some quarrels which had taken place between her and Miriam, and said to him, Certainly Joseph, my husband, has gone aside with Miriam. But Herod paid no attention to her words, knowing how pure and chaste Miriam was. After this, Herod went to Miriam on the night which followed that day, and behaved kindly and affectionately towards her, recounting his love for her, saying much upon his head, to whom she said, Did you ever see a man love another and order him to be put to death? And is he a hater unless he shows such proofs? Then Herod perceived that Josephus had discovered to Miriam the secret which he had entrusted to him, and believed that he would not have done that unless she had given herself up to him. And he believed that which his sister had told him on this subject, and immediately departing from Miriam, he hated her and detested her. Which his sister learning, went to the cupbearer, and giving him money, delivered to him some poison, and said, Carry this to the king, and say to him, Miriam, the king's wife, gave me this poison and this money, commanding that it might be mixed in the king's drink. This the cupbearer did, and the king, seeing the poison, doubted not the truth of the thing. Whereupon he gives orders to behead Josephus, his brother-in-law, immediately, and also orders Miriam to be put in chains until the seventy elders should be present and should pass a due sentence upon her. So Herod's sister feared, lest what she had done should be discovered, and she herself should perish if Miriam were set free. So she said to him, O king, if you put off Miriam's death till tomorrow, you will not be at all able to effect it. For as soon as it shall be known that you wish to kill her, the whole house of her father will come, and all her servants and neighbors, and will interpose, and you will not be able to obtain her death until after great tumults. So Herod said, Do as it seems best to you. And Herod's sister sent in all haste a man to bring out Miriam to the place of slaughter, setting upon her her maids and other women to insult her and upbraid her with all manner of indecency. But she answered nothing to any of them, nor even moved her head in the least, nor was her color changed at all by this treatment, nor did any fear or confusion appear in her, nor was her gait altered. And with her wanted manner she proceeded to her place, whither she was led to be slain. And bending her knees, she held out her neck voluntarily, and departed this life, renowned for religion and chastity, marked by no crime, branded with no guilt, howbeit she was not wholly free from haughtiness, according to the habit of her family. And of this, not the least cause was the obsequious attention and affection of Herod towards her, by reason of the elegance of her form, from whence she suspected no change in him towards her. Now Herod had begotten of her two sons, namely Alexander and Aristobulus, who, when their mother was slain, were living at Rome, for he had sent them thither to learn the literature and language of the Romans. Afterward, Herod repented that he had killed his wife, and he was affected with grief to that degree on account of her death, that by it he contracted a disease of which he had nearly died. Miriam being dead, her mother Alexandra laid plans to put Herod to death which, coming to his knowledge, he made away with her.